Naturally, August was a volatile month for the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ, with the Dow and S&P hovering at fresh highs. What will September bring for stocks as we prepare for a jobs report and potential Fed rate cuts? Joining us now is Fundra Global Advisor Head of Research and CBC contributor Tom Lee. It's great to have you with us. To be clear, we'll only have gains if it continues its strong session today, so it won't be significant net gains. Your response to the way the market interprets NVIDIA's financial results it of course, fell initially in the pre-market yesterday morning, it was doing all right, and then it did did close more meaningfully down by the end of the session yesterday. Well I think NVIDIA is one of these stocks that has become part of like a stock market lore, almost everyone has a position, and I don't think the results and the earnings changed anyone's minds about I and the central world it's playing in in both global productivity but also NVIDIA's role, but it I think the sell-off tells you that a lot of good news was priced in. I think that's why other stock fell it didn't take the broader market down. I think that was kind of in a positive outcome, and I think it just shows you that there's room for a lot of rotation. And and I think that it's revealing that small caps is one of the groups benefiting from that rotation. Let's talk about that rotation, Tom, and the extent to which there's still a long way to go if you're looking at the valuations of some of those sectors that haven't done so well in recent months, uh, and years, or, or whether things have bounced enough across the board that you start to get a little bit concerned about valuations for the entire market, not just NVIDIA's of this world um, well valuations are definitely something our clients are asking us about because of you know the equity markets have been rising for several years, but the idea rotation, I think is grounded on a couple of things, one is that cyclical stocks and small caps benefit from the Fed's lower rate path. We also know that investors are risk-averse due to the yen crisis and other concerns about the summer. Therefore, I believe that the September feed and video results will act as a catalyst to encourage investors to continue rotating their holdings. For example, I believe that we are still early in the game. There is a lot of room for multiple expansion for small caps, even though the median PE of a Russell 2000 stock is still 10.7 times forward earnings compared to nearly 17 times for the S&P. However, Tom, do you want to just own the index? There are a lot of poorly performing small caps when you talk about them, not just in terms of their debt, but also in terms of any number of other metrics you might want to use. Are you telling people to buy individual stocks or just the index? I believe it's both. Since many of our portfolio managers concentrate on small caps, they are able to identify many attractive individual stocks with strong earnings growth. However, I believe there is a misconception regarding the Russell 2000. While there are many non-earners in the Russell 2000, over 70% of them are biotech stocks, and I don't think they are meant to generate earnings. If you look at the Russell 2000's earnings overall, they rose by 30 or 18% in the quarter and are expected to grow by 39% in the third. So overall, it's not a bad index to own anyway. Tom, I want to get your thoughts on the broader economic data this morning PC came in in line with expectations we had GDP yesterday at 3% versus the 2.8% estimate as we start to get ready for an interest rate, cut how much is already priced into this market, uh, we will never know how much good news is prick in. But I think there was a lot of encouragement in both of the data points you point out you know PC core, came in at 16, you know the upside driver, there was actually financial services, which just because the stock market's up it's showing up as inflation and PC core, the year over year is staying at 2.5, 2.6, which means most people were thinking that year over year would actually tick up they had negative revisions for the prior months, and on the inflation side you know that the 2.8, for yish one year that's prepandemic levels of inflation consumers are always around 2.8. So I think this is giving the Fed a lot more green light to cut and focus on keeping the labor market strong which means it's essentially acting as a Fed put going forward, is there still room to run for the shares, is the current query. Let's discuss about what the street is saying, what Oracle stated earlier in the week, and some of the action from today's SEMA semifinals before moving on to SEMA Moby this morning. Indeed, Carl Jensen Wong's remarks yesterday, caused NVIDIA's market capitalization to rise by over $200 billion, the fourth largest increase in a single day for any company in history. This is sure to elicit reaction from the street this morning, with Bernstein naming NVIDIA a top pick 
and noting that burger margin worries are exaggerated and that NVIDIA's price target is 155 per share. The equity strategy team at Morgan Stanley has added NVIDIA to its list of stocks to hold for the upcoming year based on both quantitative and fundamental analysis. They claim that holding NVIDIA is necessary if you want exposure to the stock, and they believe that Blackwell's availability later this year will strengthen the company's competitive position. Whether yesterday's move was indicative of a sustainable rally is the key question that investors are currently attempting to answer. We are seeing NVIDIA shares up another 2%. Guys, I think that NVIDIA right now. You know last year actually if you remember um it, it took a break in the back half of the year, this is more severe. Mizuo is more cautious writing that flows into tech yesterday were solid but they did not suggest a wave of active buyers nor a rush to get long or semi names. I think there's some macro worries and whatnot but that the big thing about uh, NVIDIA is they're in a product transition and um the rest of Semis also is is absorbing the potential recessionary risks and some other things going on. So I think that in terms of NVIDIA, all one of the big surprises on their last call was taking gross margins down in the near term and semi-stocks that hit that usually with a gross margin bump, a tend to you know out not perform anymore for a little while until they get that going again. But I think they'll come out on the other side of that uh within a few quarters, and I think that'll be a big topic uh when he speaks later today. Uh if folks are able to ask questions we watched NVIDIA sort of ignore, everything not related to AI, I I mean the Fed a uh, global growth concerns, uh, what was happening in in other uh, semiconductors, are you saying now it might it might actually paying be paying attention to the possibility of a global slowdown, a growth slow, I mean I watch oil, and look at the 10 year, we're going to see inflation numbers today. But but there are some macro things going on that that are might be reaching in in a more climactic point than before with Nvidia, is it is it subject to that, or or no well, I think that they have a lot of things going on that are immune. I think the semis in general you are having potentially another macro pro scare uh, here in the back half of the year, you know and caught up in that, but in terms of AI in general, I think there's a lot of tailline secular tailwinds that over the over the long term, we're going to be we're going to be doing really well. I feel like uh, they're insulated a bit from some of these macro swings like in PCS, some of the commodity servers potentially and some other areas. So I think they're doing really well. One of the problems is that they're squeezing out a lot of air. And people need to direct their spending toward artificial intelligence, I, which could have an impact on some other sectors that have been more significant in the first half. I believe that this will be a major story again next year. So you know, while I wish the macro data was better, I feel like Nvidia is pretty well insulated. But I also feel like it's gobbling up a lot of mindshare within the industry, generally with this sell-off in terms of margins at NVIDIA, and we just think, well, that's pretty good, whatever they happen to be, and a company that size there just can't last where the margins stay, where they are so what would be what would be considered okay.